Hello YouTube and welcome back, this is Nico and you're watching Dirty Game. Today we're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance and uh, we're going to be doing a different sort of video today. We're going to be taking a look at castles and as you can see we're outside Scalettes, later in the game of course. And this is the first stop we're going to be doing. Basically, what inspired me to do this video, I saw uh, Shadowversity, I'll have a link in the description. If you love historical analysis of pop culture, video games, movies, TV shows, that sort of stuff, that's the channel to check out, he's great. So I'll link that in the description, but... What actually inspired me to make this video was I was watching a smaller creator, Imperium Gaming. Uh, and I'll link that one in the description too. It makes some great videos. It doesn't have many out yet, but it's worth worth a look, I think. Especially if you like Kingdom Come Deliverance. And he does the same sort of, same, same sort of thing. Ooh, almost butchered that. Uh, looks at a lot of historical context, and he's been doing Kingdom Come Deliverance. So, uh, I was watching that video and I was like, yeah, you know what? I really like the castles in Kingdom Come Deliverance. So, I decided I'd make a video of my own looking at these castles, so obviously we're starting with, with Scalettes. So as you can see, we're outside, and like I said, this is later in the game, so after the attack, and there's, yeah. you know, some burnt down sections and such, but that was obviously supposed to be a gate back there. Uh, you can see uh, we're looking at, you know, sort of a palisade, what you want to call this. It's a wall, but, you know, very simplistic, and from what I can tell, realistic to the time period and location, because even though this would have been a wealthier estate for the time, still not... You know, it's not a big town, it's not a cultural hub, it's not bringing in that much revenue. So, this this is pretty realistic. I mean, they're a little bit short, I would say. These are a little short, because honestly, you, you can see I'm sitting on a horse. It would be extremely easy to scale these walls. So they're, yeah, they're, in my opinion, they're a little short. Maybe more for looks than actual function. You know, even if this was a realistic context, if, this was, if I was looking at a real city, I would say these are more intended to intimidate, I don't know, small forces of bandits to make them think that it's a better defended town than it actually is, because these aren't much of a deterrent, especially considering what we'll see when we get on the inside. But that being said, there's a tower here, what, which at one point was able to have archers in it, So, and since it's extending outside, which should be more realistic, it can shoot down the length of the walls, and I mean, even though these curve quite a bit, so that's, that's not terrible. Uh, if you had a gatehouse here, a full-size gatehouse, that would be even better, but that's okay for a low-budget castle. Uh, I shouldn't even be saying castle on this point, because this is just the town. Uh, this is the outer outer ring of the town. I could pop into the map and show you what I'm talking about. So if you look, this is this is a pretty accurate representation of a lot of medieval to uh, towns around this area. You know, a lot of your smaller ones. You have the keep up here. Around it, you have the, I think this is called the Outer Bailey. Forgive me, like I said, if you really want the historical analysis, the really accurate stuff where they use all the right terms the first time, Shadowversity is a great place to go. Uh, but for now, yeah, so like I see, this is the, your outer ring here. You've got three gates, one here, one here, and one here. After Scalps is burned, this is the only one that's open, the other two are blocked. Uh, and the palisade goes all the way around the outside. And here you have your tavern and... There doesn't appear to be a church in Scalettes. There's one in Ravna, but normally you'd think there'd be a church somewhere around here. And you just have a lot of housing. Uh, a couple farms. Not not a ton. I shouldn't say farms. These are more like gardens. Uh, what I do like is the accuracy of all this farmland outside of it. That's something you don't get in a lot of video games like Skyrim and everything. There is actually well-developed farmland. And then the rest of... You can see there's more of the town down here. Uh, this little fort thing is associated with the mines but it's actually pretty well you know defended the walls are taller than the ones for the town so it's not terrible but anyway yeah so this is the general layout so let's make our way up to the outer bailey before we look anymore uh one more thing before we go up there though my problem with these walls is they're basically useless for defense because he, the there's no earthworks going up to it so you can't stand and shoot over them and there's no walkway there's nothing you can do so defense wise they don't like i said i should say maybe they're more intended for use against animals or something yeah. like you don't want wolves coming into your town but other than that they don't serve much of a purpose but let's get up to the outer bailey which is actually much better so we'll start with right here there's a gatehouse and before it was burnt down there was a portcullis and it was actually well done because the portcullis actually goes up into the top of the gatehouse there's room for it so it's historically accurate uh you can see it's burnt out a bit. There are no really, not any murder holes or anything, you know, what people can throw obstacles or shoot arrows, you know, things like that down into it. But it was actually a decent gatehouse. And in here you have, like I was mentioning down there, you actually have earthworks up here. And you have shooting holes and 
you know, so this is good. This is a good wall, an accurate representation of what would be found in the area, and this is actually defensible. That being said, stone would clearly be better, but it's also way more expensive. Um, yeah, but so these are good. Again, a little bit short, but considering the drop, it's not, it's not a bad height, because from the outside, it's still pretty tall. And now while it would be pretty easy to bring ladders over that, they do have to make their way through the entire town, so you're not going to be seeing a lot of heavy siege equipment. And inside here you have what you would call the craftsman's yard. Here it's just a blacksmith, but that makes sense. That would be up closer in the uh, outer bailey inside here. And then we have another gate coming up here. And this is why I really like Scallop's Castle is this right here. Uh, I probably should have done this before the attack, but as you can see, this wall here that goes around the bailey... I say, maybe you can't see it, but it... Uh, there's a moat. It's not full of water, but it's just a dug trench inside there. So this goes around the outside of that, and there's a little bit of walk-in room inside there. But what makes this castle so great, because this wall here is... That's pretty much impossible to, you know, attack. You could lay siege, obviously, but you're not going to be able to bring a siege tower over here because you're not going to be able to get over the moat. This wall would need to be completely dismantled if you wanted to try something like that. And due to the defensive layout... How it's got, you know, you've got these outcroppings so they can cover any along the wall. There's great crenellations. That's what those top things are called. And I think the parts that stick up are called the merlons. That's another thing I really like about the castles in this game. They're accurate. They're good. They're actually tall enough that a soldier can stand completely behind them, which is great. Um, up here, before this got burnt down, you had meticulations, which is where the stuff, the... I think they're called battlements. Again, like I said, terms, not my not my strong suit. Even if I looked at them right before this video, I'd still forget them. Uh, but they stick out farther from the wall so you can shoot things down and drop, uh, drop rocks and stuff, spears, whatever, down on your enemies. So this is actually a really, really good representation of a medieval castle. And one that I think would be very defensible. In fact, in the game, a little spoiler alert, I guess, if you've never played it, uh, when the people right at the beginning of the game, when they're fleeing... They say, they were like, yeah, we were safe inside there, but they had laid uh, laid siege, so they escaped under the cover of a storm, and they were able to get out because they knew that they wouldn't be able to, with a direct assault, even with their overwhelming force, wouldn't be able to take the castle. They would have to siege besiege them, but they knew that their position was weak enough that the siege would work. Eventually, they would either die inside or have to surrender. So, yeah, it's a great castle. Uh, last thing for this castle, there's a... Uh, I think this is called a sally door, or sally port. It's for, the term comes from when they sally forth, which is when they run out, out, out this door. Not to escape, this is like a counterattack if you're being attacked. And uh, you'll see it in games like Mountain Blade, when you're inside a city. You'll have the option, if you're being attacked, to sally forth. And you can lead a small number of troops out and attack the attacking force. Generally speaking, it'll be... Uh, relatively close to the front gate because that's normally where an assault will be coming from at least most of the time depending on the castle and uh, that way you'll be able to lead a small force and flank them usually if you could route them you know attack over or at least thwarted for a little while allowing you to uh, regain some composure this can be seen in actually the second lord of the rings movie uh the two towers that's what gimli and aragorn go through it's it's a sally port that's how they get outside these can be a strategic weakness they're normally hidden uh if enemies know where they are, they can generally get in, but since they're small and they're usually put up on a high, steep path or something like that, that makes it hard to get at them with a battering ram or something. If you've got a nice strong door there with a good, you know, bar or something locking it off, they're pretty hard to get in through. But a lot of times, you know, they were a weakness that was often exploited when besieging a castle. So now let's go check out Talmberg, which is actually probably my favorite castle in the game. Alright, so we're outside Talmberg Castle here, and I'll get into why it's my favorite, but first we'll show you the town and the layout and all that jazz, so you can get a feel for how this one compares to Silver Scallops. Now the reason I emphasized Silver Scallops here is because I'm going to talk about what the differences are here. Talmberg, like all castles and man uh, manors back then, they were either set up for a strategic location, so to defend a important strait or something like that, or a resource. 
Now, Scalitz was for silver. That's why it's a pretty big settlement, considering considering the low population, why the castle and the town is it's pretty big and there's a wall around the whole town. It's because the silver was such a valuable and important resource that it was warrant, it warranted that. Plus, it made the local lord more rich, or richer, I should say. Whereas Talmberg is set up right for this right here. It's a stone quarry, which is still extremely important and very profitable, but it's not the same as silver. It doesn't quite compare. But also the location and everything, but... So you'll see it's a nice, it's a good location because it's the conjunction of this stream here and this stream here with this little lake right in the middle. So it makes sense to be set up right here. It's good for resources, fresh water, fishing, all that stuff. It's also set up right on the edge of a forest, which means that they, you know, can hunt a lot, I guess. So that's great too. But as you can see, there's no outer wall around the town. The town clusters right here and there's no outer wall. There's a couple reasons for that. One is the land doesn't support it super well. Two is, again, cost. And three is... The way that it's set up, it's really, really easy for basically the entire population of the town to quickly get inside the outer bailey of the castle up here. So, there's a lot of reasons why there isn't, but yeah, that's that's basically it. So, let's look at the castle. So, from out here, you can see the outer bailey. Now, I love this castle. First of all, the design is awesome. Second of all, the strategic value of this is amazing. It's up on this big-ass hill with these steep sides on both sides. Uh, it's not as steep on the other side, but it's still pretty imposing so this is already winning for defense secondly we have this beautiful gatehouse here with a portcullis again room for it up there we've got a window up there there's sides on either you know you got you can see at it from either side the walls are nice and tall you got little i guess you could call those murder holes let's see if they have any on the inside not really not really any murder holes unless you count the cracks in the boards but it's great. It's a great setup. So we'll we'll go around and we'll take a look at the walls. Again, here we're using earthwork, so the walls aren't the same height on either side. They got the earth right up to it, so you can look right down. That makes this super easy to defend. You look at this. That's kind of like a moat, and we'll get to that later, but this is a great, great defensible situation. You've got these tall, tall, like I said, I think these are called merlons, uh, but the, they're beautiful because you can easily sit behind them. You know, whole body is protected. Then you look right down and you can fire your arrows. And of course it goes around like that the whole way. It's not made of stone, but like I've said, due to the location and the way that it's made, it's still a really, really great castle. I mean, look at this. There's no way you're getting siege equipment up that, at least not without taking heavy losses. Um, and if you get around, they've got a tower here. Uh, again, arrow slits so you can shoot out of them, full coverage, all that stuff. But let's get down to the gatehouse. So here, I actually love the detail they put in this game. This isn't just a castle analysis, it's also appreciation for this. Because, look at this. Now, I'm not a... Well, I mean, that doesn't look right. But I'm not an expert on this stuff, but that looks pretty realistic, time-wise, and like it would work. But there you can see the gate going down. Again, you can see out at your approaching army or band of brigands, whatever you want to go with. And you can see from the approach here, not a very big force can come up. Because this is really the only logical direction where you're going to have an attack coming from in most cases because it's the only accessible part and that's not a very wide path so like i said this is a super defensible castle so if we pop down you can see there's several buildings in here enough room for you know all of the population of the town to sit inside i guess not really a lot of sleeping room this building is pretty big though uh so in the case of an attack like i said there is enough room for all the population to be in here and maybe kind of safe because they'd be inside here but let's move across to the next part of this that I like so much. First of all, we have another gate here. Uh, not a full gatehouse, which I would prefer, but there is a gate. And we come here to the best defensive feature of this entire castle. The lovely steep-as-hell moat and drawbridge. Drawbridges are amazing. Whenever I watch a movie and I see an attacking army easily defeat a drawbridge, I always have to laugh because they were just about as good as defenses came. And here we have a gatehouse, and there's only one thing wrong with it. No portcullis, at least, well... Yeah, yeah, there is one. Okay, so I didn't see it at first, but yeah, it's right there. So there is a nice portcullis. Again, uh, there are problems. I would, I would either have another door or portcullis here and something here, because that way, after if they were able to defeat this one, they'd have to defeat a whole other one. Um, but that being said, not many armies can get past the drawbridge and the portcullis unless they have a trebuchet, and then they just destroy it. But so yeah, there's that. And then you get up in here into the gatehouse. Oh crap, they don't want me in there. But there okay blah 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 go away nothing to see here okay let's just walk around 
Up here you do have stone, so these are all pretty well, uh, you know, these are going to be strong, durable, but they're, again, they're plenty wide. You could have two guys standing full, covered behind this, and then you've got plenty of, you know, room to shoot. It's accurate. These are slanted. That would allow you to do that. Uh, you do have meticulations, like up on the towers and such. We're not going to go up into all of them in detail and everything. But again, like I said, there you have another one. In here you have the inner keep. This is, I guess, what you'd call the castle or the manor. Pretty standard for the time. Again, this is a poorer, you know, this isn't some super rich lord. But this is all really accurate, really defensible. Up there you've got more area to shoot from. This is my favorite castle in the game. Plus, it's it's probably my favorite castle in any video game ever. It's realistic. It looks great. You've got your stables inside. Plenty of room for your guards. I love it. This is a fantastic castle. My favorite one in the game. So let's check out the last two castles. And those ones will be shorter because we've already talked about most of the features. But those are the upper and lower castle in Rete. Alright, so this is the town of Rete. And let's get an outlook and I'll explain something quick. Now, this is not a castle. This is a town. That being said, it's very well defended. Uh, now, again, like I said, with resources, the, uh, one was for silver, one was for stone. This one is not so much for resources as it is a trading hub. This became, early on, a very, very popular trading hub. And the upper castle, if I'm getting my history right, because I can't remember, it's been a while since I read this, but I think the upper castle was first. This was the castle that was built, and the wall was built around the town. And then later, you know a generation or t three generations or whatever later, the Lord built this one down here so it would be even better defended. But let's just go over a couple things. First of all, siege equipment basically would have to follow the paths that are given and defended against because they're the only ways into this castle. It's surrounded by steep, uh, steep cliffs, has plenty of resources, so it'd be hard to, like I said, there's wells and everything, so water wouldn't be an issue in here. Uh, there's a decent amount of farmland. All of this up here, this is all farmland that supports Rete, so you imagine the food stores aren't too terrible. Um, but yeah, so defense-wise, this is great. This is a great natural location, and of course that makes sense, because this is a historically accurate game. This is actually what the town looks like and actually where it was built. Uh, so it makes sense that it would be a great place to build, because you wouldn't build a town or a castle in a bad place. You know, that would be stupid. But let's get right down into it. Like I said, we'll be looking at the castles, because this is a town... Uh, but we'll, we'll touch on the town stuff. So first of all, these towns, I mean, these walls are freaking huge. Uh, not unrealistic, like I said, because this is actually pretty accurate to what it actually looked like. And there's some stuff that still exists that supports this, but it's built right, you know, you can see these outcroppings of rock. It's built right into it. But these are tall as hell. So you would need a really good ladder, really tall ladder, or a siege tower. And siege tower would be really hard because of the hill. So you're going to take heavy losses trying to take this by force. So if you lived here in medieval times, you'd be pretty safe. You can see we have a portcullis, not a full gatehouse, uh, but a decent, this is a very heavy portcullis, you can see the counterweights. And you have the battlements, covered battlements, this would be really hard to attack from this side. So already we're looking good. Now the wall all the way around the town isn't fully accessible to walk on, some of it's just a wall. But that's mostly because the parts that are like that are steep cliff right down it. So yes, it'd be great if you could have people there, but you don't really need people there. But here is the lower castle in Rete. So already we're looking good. We have a long, narrow bridge, which is always good. Ooh, an arrow. And a drawbridge. Again, like I said, loving the drawbridge. Again, not a full gatehouse. And, huh. I thought this one had a portcullis. Okay, so this doesn't have a portcullis, but it does have a drawbridge, which again is a really good defense. Especially considering... It looks like it can be raised pretty quick again due to the counterweights. In here we have the inner keep, pretty standard. This is obviously a pretty small castle. Uh, if you're if you're realistic about it, most times you're going to have one person, you know, one lord in command of Rete, uh, or one family, and they're going to be in the upper castle. So this would be more of a garrison almost, but it's it's still really really well defen uh, re defensible. In here we've got the long tall crenellations. Uh, or, no, uh, metic no, yeah, crenellations. <laughs> I'm getting my terms mixed up. Plenty tall, plenty wide. You can fit two people behind and you could easily shoot from. Same can be said. This tower is the same thing. Those are meticulations. It sticks out further so you'd be able to shoot down. Uh, makes sense that this is, you know, you get the spiral staircase, all that jazz. Um, in here we have the top of what would be the gatehouse if it was a gatehouse, but it's not, so I'm disappointed about that, but... Again, historically accurate, so I can't be too mad at the game developers. I'm mad at the people who built the castle and decided not to include it. But again, you can see this. Now, you've got all of these around the outside, and of course you have them facing down to the town, just in case that gate was breached. 
Because now they have a whole other obstacle to overtake. They got into the town, sure, but they're just going to get even more murdered once they get in here because their numbers are going to be dwindled down to as many as can fit in that little square and across this bridge, and they're just going to get hammered with arrows. And, of course, it goes like that all the way around. So let's take a look at one more thing in the lower castle before we move on. So the last thing we're going to look at here is in this room through here. We have a sally door, or sally fort. And this one I like better, okay? So this goes out into this little outer bailey here, as you can see. And, of course, it goes up this side. And I think this goes back into the castle, too, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, now, it does have a wall, so it's defended. And from a distance, it kind of blends in, so you kind of don't even know it's here. Uh, but this would be a great place to put, you know, civilians out of the way during an attack. This would be a great place to put them is back there, because it just wouldn't be a target. Uh, and then you have here the sally door. Now, now the problem with this is, this is the actual sally door. That one just goes out to fight you. Uh, this one goes down, and of course, this is pretty well hidden, and it's it would be hard to assault from here because of the steepness and narrowness of this path. Uh, and this is kind of secret. So, like I said, this is great. It's a great way to get in the castle in the game if you want to. Uh, but my problem is, there's no door! <laughs> there's no portcullis. There's no... There's not even a wooden door. Nothing... Ugh, that's bad. I mean, just... I'll give them the benefit of the doubt since it's been a while since I've checked this out. And go see if there's one down here. Down at the end of the... Cave thing. Yeah, see. There's none. Now, this is great, strategically, because even if you're under siege, this is super secret. This would be hard to find, and it gives you access to fre fresh water. Well, kind of fresh, but you get what I'm saying. It gives you access to water. So this was realistic. A lot of castles had this, and including this one. This is actually... I'm sure it had doors on it, because there's no way it wouldn't. But you would definitely want a door down there that could only be opened from the inside. So not even a handle on the outside. Um... Because that's generally what they were like if they were like this. And you'd want a really strong one here with a big bar going across it. But other than that, that's great. So now that we've looked at that, like I said, inside's pretty standard. A lot of sleeping room in here. This is an armory. This is all great stuff. So I love this castle. It's fantastic. But let's move on to the last castle in the game, which is the upper castle for Rite. Okay, so we're here up at the, the upper castle for Rite. And... There's a lot of good stuff here, so I'll get into that, but just a couple things in the meantime. First of all, there are two doors. I mean, I don't know about that. I wouldn't do that. I would just have the one. Probably this one. Because, A, they're both good locations, don't get me wrong. These are both very defendable, but you'd only want to want you'd only want to have to defend one, since you have you already have a gate on the other side of the town. You'd only want one up here, and I would have this one here. Because that way you don't have one going directly into your castle. But, like I said, that is a very defendable gateway, and we'll, get, we'll go over there and check it out. But this one is also great. Uh, this confuses me. I mean, it doesn't. I get it. That way, if you wanted to just let one person out, you could just drop this one, and this could stay up. But uh, I, I'm sure it's historically accurate, so I'm not going to argue with it. But, yeah, so you have a drawbridge. Here we have a, like I said, not a complete gatehouse. They don't have complete gatehouses anywhere in this game, because you'd want something on this side, too. Uh, a door or something. But there's a portcullis that drops down. That's great. I don't know if there's just a door or something in there. But yeah, so that's all fantastic. Big counterweights. You can see these big imposing walls. So let's go check out the yeah. gate that for some reason goes up into the castle. Which, like I said, I don't like that. Uh, you wouldn't want one going right into the castle. If you have the benefit of having these big fortified outer walls to your city, you wouldn't want a gate coming right into the keep of your castle because... Nobody would go to that one, you know? They would be like, well, let's take this one, even though it's really hard because these walls are super tall. There's a moat, really steep drop, so this would be hard to besiege, but... Like I said, this would still be the route that people would take because then they'd be in your castle. That, that's your end game right there, but... So anyway, we have a portcullis, and this one's closer to a full gatehouse with a portcullis... I'm uh, uh, drawbridge, portcullis, and then, like I said, normally you'd have a door here, but whatever. Um, once you're inside, there, there are battlements all the way around so it would be really hard to besiege it anyway um same this is pretty standard for all the ones you go up there there's wheels and all sorts of stuff um so it's all all pretty accurate this is super defendable now before i said talmberg is my favorite castle and i stand by that just objectively in the game talmberg is my favorite castle but if hypothetically i was a lord or a knight or something and i was getting to choose out of one of these clearly i'd take the upper castle at rate it's the best uh it's the biggest it's the most well defended You've even got a cool duel arena. It's awesome. But, so we go through here. Again, same, th same thing. Gatehouse. This one being more accurate, you'd want a nice long gatehouse like this. 
uh, with a portcullis and a door on that side. And since you've got a drawbridge here, you don't need a door on this side. But this is pretty well defendable. I'm not a huge fan of this right here, the little door and then the open space through here. I get that they're utilizing it as an archery range, which is great. Because it's out of the way and it's, you know, not what you'd consider useful space any other way. But I don't like the idea of having troops being able to be right there. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so this is great. Super hard to besiege. And it goes out into here where you have an outer bailey where, personally, now I think, yeah, those are doors. So it does have doors. We'll get off the horse here. Personally, I would have a whole nother gatehouse with a portcullis here. Why not? You're already spending this much money and everything on it. I mean, the doors are all right. They they open out, so you bring those in, you bar those doors, you know, realistically. They can get a battering ram in here, and there's plenty of room, but that would still be pretty hard to take. Then they do. They still have to get across the narrow bridge, through the drawbridge, through the portcullis to get into the castle. So this is basically an impossible castle to, uh, to take by force. Here in the, what you'd call the craftsman's yard, you actually have a little bit more. You've got a church, which is great. It's not a full-blown church. This is a chapel mostly just for the nobility. Here you have a blacksmith, so you can supply weapons, ammunition, I guess. Down here there's the huntsman, but you've got plenty of room up here. And here we get to the only part of the upper castle that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, for one thing, these walls don't have any crenellations, which I'm not a fan of. The wall is pretty tall, so it would make it hard to shoot over. It's got that going for it. Um, notice the sarcasm. But there's no crenellations, so not a fan of this. That would definitely not be the way I'd go, because you'd want the whole thing to be... You'd want it to look like the outer walls or the inner walls in the lower castle. You'd want full crenellations just in case they breach the town. You'd be able to defend this castle. And again, this needs to be a full gatehouse, not just a door. Now, see, the problem with this is even worse than the door up there that I said I would like to have a gatehouse. This one's even worse because there's not a gatehouse. There's no portcullis. There's no defenses and the door opens in. So it makes it even easier to knock down with a battering ram. That's a, lot of things, uh, a thing that a lot of people take for granted is battering rams and doors. Uh, if you wanted to design a defensible door that you're going to be able to bar from the inside and make it hard to get in, have it open out, not in. I know a lot of historical castles open in, but this is a classic mistake. You're, you're just, your force required to knock that door in is getting way lower. And you can, you can build. There are examples of historical castles where they had built-in bars that would drop into place behind the door and it's just as good as a portcullis except you can't shoot through it so it's not quite as good but they also can't shoot through it um but yeah so that's that's my problem here the only problem with this upper castle in my opinion is this lower door that goes into the town because even if you take aside the separate entrance that goes right into the keep from the outside which i would not do this makes it really really easy to get into the outer bailey here now like i said it'd still be really hard to get into the keep but if you're already backed into there, it takes a lot less people to besiege a castle. You know, you don't need to have armies surrounding the entire castle. You just need to have enough men out here and enough men on the other side to make anyone inside here trapped. You know, but yeah, so that does it for this. Like I said, I got the inspiration from this for, in part from Shadowversity because I really do like his content. And, but more recently and probably more importantly because it's a small YouTuber and I, you know, got to support small YouTubers because... If I don't, who will? <laughs> um, but yeah, Imperium Gaming. So like I said, links in the description. Go check them out. They're great. He, like I said, he doesn't have a ton of videos, but he's got a few, and they're all good. So subscribe, and hopefully he'll make more. But with all that in mind, that does it for this one. Hope you didn't mind my rambling style. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you like the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.